Wait, hold up. Before you rebrand, I wanna ask you three simple questions. And I want you to answer them honestly. I've heard it too many times, photographers saying, I think I'm just gonna rebrand, and I can't tell you how often I've recognized that to be the wrong solution. Today, we're gonna to talk about rebranding and why it may not be the best option for your business. What's up guys, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sam Marvin and I've been in the photography industry for 25 plus years. While I love being a creative, business is my passion and elevating the industry of photography is my focus. I created the Seven Figure Photographer to share my journey to seven figures and help others find their way too. Let's get down to business. There is very little in this world that I hate more than hearing excuses. I don't have enough time or the customers just aren't calling or you name it. Like there's excuses that come out of the woodworks. And if people could just realize that they are the reason for everything and they can be the reason to squash the excuses, the world would be a better place. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't like people that make excuses, because let's face it, everybody does it. But today I wanna share with you three questions that I want you to ask yourself before you actually consider rebranding your business. Now, rebrand is like, I swear it's the most common thing I hear from photographers when they're struggling in their business. I'm just gonna rebrand. And there's so many reasons I think this is the wrong way to go, but, I'm gonna ask you three questions and I want you to answer those questions honestly. In fact, if you want to comment below the answer to the questions I'm gonna ask. But the first question I have for you is, does your business reside at one obscurity lane? Now, I know that's kind of vague and the concept is, is well, first of all, let's talk about what obscurity is. Obscurity is the unknown or the inconspicuous or unimportant. So let me give you a good example. I decide I'm gonna open a photography business and I find a nice place out in the middle of the country and I build a studio and nobody knows where I'm at. Nobody even knows that I'm a photographer. Nobody knows that I have a business out there, but I reside at one obscurity lane. If you take a deeper look into your business and consider, is your business known? Have you taken the time or made the effort to make sure that people know about your business. What that could be is that could be handing out a business card to 10 different people every single day. Or it could just be the work you do on social media, making sure to post on a regular basis or getting out there. If people don't know who you are, guess what? Rebranding is completely pointless. Because if Coca-Cola was never known, and they rebranded, guess what? They'd still not ever be known. So in that situation, if nobody knows about you, maybe the first place to look is how can I become more known? Is changing your logo or your brand really going to align yourself with the nobody that knows you? Now, I don't wanna sound harsh because we've all been there. In fact, sometimes we go through lulls where we are less known than we used to be, or we just haven't gotten to the point where we are known. Sometimes it really just boils down to we're not doing the work to get our name out there in front of people. There's so many different ways you can do this, and I'm not even gonna dive into them, but I want you to answer that question honestly. Is your business obscure? Do you live at one obscurity lane? And are you unknown? So that's question number one. Number two, are you your title? There's two kinds of photographers in the world. There's corporate photographers or photographers that work for a company and they don't have to do anything except for take the pictures and provide them to the company. But the other kind is the entrepreneur. Now, if you're the latter or an entrepreneur, which most of us as photographers are, that means you're not just a photographer. You're actually an entrepreneur. That means that you have, or as they say, you wear 17 hats. The concept is, is that you have to be the marketer. You have to be the accountant or the bookkeeper. You have to be the photographer and you have to be the salesperson. Now, I know that might scare the hell out of a lot of you because sales is terrifying, and some of you might say, oh, if I have to be a salesperson, I'm not doing this job. Well, breaking news, everything we do in life is sales. 
In fact, if you ever get a chance, read the book that you might see over there in my bookcase somewhere, the red one that's called Sell or Be Sold by Grant Cardone. One of the best books I ever read taught me a lot of things about the fact that it's okay to be a salesperson. But when we're a photographer, we have to be all the things in the business. Now, if we focus all on the online persona or being a business online, but we don't ever actually go out and take pictures, there's a concern. So the reason for the question, are you, the, are you your title? Are you actually out there taking pictures? Are you being a photographer? Now, I know there's a lot of you that have learned a lot and realized that your value is great and you don't wanna be out there taking pictures for nothing or for free, but guess what? You will come out of obscurity faster taking pictures for free and posting them on social media and getting them in front of the right people because everybody wants free photography. I mean, let's face it, we're, we're in that area era. Once you have people knowing who you are or once you're out of obscurity, then you can focus on the business of taking care of the clients or the sales or, you know, because once you learn how to get the people and the people know that you're there and your brand is recognized, then you can take the time to work on those other aspects of your business and fix the problems that are before you. So make sure that you are your title. If you're a photographer, I always say I'm a photographer and entrepreneur because honestly, photography is just one small part of what I do. If I wasn't at least a photographer in my photography business, then there wouldn't be a whole lot to me. But I focus on all of the other aspects just as much as being a photographer. Photography part for me is the time where I get to just relax and do what I feel comes natural to me. Now, the last question that I want you to answer or ask yourself is, will a rebrand fix my problem? You guys have all seen the Ford Pinto from back in 1980, whenever, I don't even know when they came out, but they were the ugliest pieces of beauty and engineering. A Ford Pinto. Here's the thing. If you put new rims on a Ford Pinto and you give it a paint job and you polish it up and you vacuum it out, it's still a Ford Pinto. You've heard the saying that if you polish a turd, it's still a turd. Same thing goes for branding. It's not the brand. It's not the logo. It's nothing to do with that. It's everything to do with yourself. You have to focus on fixing the problems. Oftentimes those problems lie deeper within the brand and they have everything to do with a keyboard warrior, somebody that sits behind the keyboard and fixes everything and makes their business perfect, but then doesn't go out and get in front of people and make the business happen. Now, I know this sounds really harsh, really kind of just mean, but that's not my intention. My intention is to help you realize that fixing or rebranding is not necessarily the key. Now, the number one reason people rebrand, the reason that word is even there is corporate takeover, acquisition, mergers. Those typically are reasons that a company will come in and rebrand is to show that ownership has changed or that management has changed or that they're taking a different direction. Now that's understandable. If your business is taking a different direction and you have some old style brand that is suited towards old people, I don't even know where, and you're trying to focus on high school seniors, then yeah, that might be a little bit different. But understand that changing your brand is not going to just bring people in the door. Um, another reason for rebranding is, let's just say for instance, there was a photographer here a couple years ago. I won't say any names. The photographer pissed off a lot of people. And there was a lot of bad reviews. In fact, the news blew this person up. Um, there, was, there was a lot of bad juju about this photographer. That is a perfect example of when to rebrand. Because let me tell you, you have <laughs> draw, driven your business into the dirt. And that's probably a good time to reassess what you're doing and rebrand your company at that point. Otherwise, consider focusing your time and attention on the things that will make your business go forward instead of just sitting behind the computer and making your business perfect, in theory, get out there and find the customers. Market, knock on doors, hand out business cards, 
Take lots and lots and lots of pictures. Be involved where your clients, your target clients would be involved. Be where your customers are. Those are the things that you can do to help your business rather than rebranding it. Now, I'd love to hear from you guys if you've had a time where you thought about rebranding or if you're thinking about it now. If you've thought about it or you're thinking about it now, please comment below. Tell us what you're thinking, why you're thinking that, and answer these questions in the comments below. Also, don't forget to smash the like button, share this post with anybody that you think might benefit from hearing it. That's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for hanging out with us. Make sure to scroll down and smash the like button or comment. We will see you again soon.